What if I told you this one lens is the most versatile lens ever and it can do just about everything? And no, it's not even a zoom lens. It takes ultra wides, portraits, macro, astro, whatever. And I'm gonna show you how this is possible. I'm gonna use three AI tools in this lens to pull this off. Hmm? didn't actually have an ultra wide prime that I could use for this video. So I actually picked up this boy. This is the Viltrox. This is the, the Viltrox full frame AF16 1.8 FE lens. I'm not gonna pretend like I didn't already open this thing. It's right here. <laughs> I did reach out to Viltrox to see if I can get a sample of this lens for this video, but I didn't get a reply. So just to keep things going, I just bought the lens for myself and as a little celebration to myself. So just as a side note, this video was actually inspired by this viewer who sparked this thought in my head. And I just want to let everyone know that I read and try to reply to every single comment. And if you didn't know, this channel is brand spanking new. And I still can't believe the amount of support everyone is giving me. And I just wanna let everyone know that I appreciate them from the bottom of my heart. Anywho, back to the video. So all those images that you saw before were actually taken with this lens. But just how? How did you get those bokehlicious backgrounds? How did you get those macro shots? Ultra wide angles aren't supposed to look like that. And the truth is you'd be absolutely right. They're not supposed to. But the thing is, camera technology in the last few years have just been getting insane. And with a little bit of advanced camera knowledge and understanding, I'm gonna show you how this all works. How you can use this one ultra wide angle lens to replace all your zoom lenses. When you think of ultra wide lenses, you're probably thinking lens distortions, fish eyes, wacky lens compressions. You've probably seen videos like this that explain lens distortion in portraiture and thought, oh yeah, wide angle lenses are not supposed to look like that. But the thing is, lens compression isn't really a real thing. And everything you know about lens compression is pretty much a lie. And let me show you why. We're gonna jump to the office and we're gonna meet my buddy Lee, who's gonna help me demonstrate how this works. If I do this as like a loading bar. <laughs> hope you guys didn't click away because I, I just couldn't think of a transition to jump from here to there. So <laughs> I hope it works. Hey, so we're here at the office. This is Lee and he's gonna be helping me illustrate this. I got the, my GoPro rigged up so you guys can follow along and see what I'm doing. I feel like I'm like right in the center or something because like, I'm there, I like lit up like crazy. Man. Like, oh. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> If you're using an ultra wide angle lens like this and shooting a foot away from someone's face, then yes, the image is gonna look like this. And if you're using a telephoto lens like this, and stand all the way back here, but I actually should be there, and then take an image, then yes, the image is gonna look a lot more flattering because the lens compression looks better. And this is where things get crazy. If I switch back to the ultra wide lens and take the same photo, the ultra wide angle lens is gonna look much wider, but with ultra high resolution cameras nowadays, like the A7R5 with the 63 megapixel sensor, I can zoom all the way in and get the exact same framing as my telephoto lens. You'll see that the lens compression actually looks the exact same. <laughs> Obviously the bokeh is different. However, with the newest AI tools, I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna overcome that. Sun is setting and it's getting way too dark in here for me to shoot. So I'm gonna go pop upstairs in my studio and I'll shoot the rest of the video there. So just to break this principle down, lens compression is not caused by the focal length you're using, but by the distance you are from your subject. If you really think about this, this is exactly the same reason why crop factors work in smaller sensor cameras. And in this example, I was using a 16 millimeter lens. And if I use this exact same lens on an APS-C side sensor, this would actually become a 24 millimeter lens. And if I use this on a micro four third sensor that has a two times crop, it would actually become a 32 mil lens. But in this example that I'm showing today, on a 90 millimeter lens, this would actually be about a six times crop, which is about the same crop factor as your typical phone sensor. 
Now that I've explained how I'm using ultra wide lenses to look like telephoto lenses, let's jump in and I'll show you how I'm gonna use AI tools to match these images. All right, so the first AI tool I'm gonna use today is Lightroom's AI powered lens blur tool. And if you haven't seen this tool before, I actually do a deep dive of this tool in this video. I'm not gonna go into all the details of how this feature works, but if you wanna know more, you can check out this video here. All right, so with one click, let's see how this turns out. And with just a click, this is actually looking pretty close. I can tune the bokeh and depth of field and try to match it more closely. But overall, I would say side by side, these two images are looking pretty damn close already. So this image is a little bit soft and it's a little bit lower resolution than the telephoto image. So the next AI tool I'm gonna use is Topaz AI to upscale the image and sharpen the image. And from here, we can see how much we can recover. Oh dude. <laughs> That's actually nuts. I'm gonna pull cameraman Lee into this. Just dude, look at your like neck. Ready? This is the cropped in version. Like oh shit. Brought, like your neck details Wait, that's, back. That's the that's the wide one. Yeah. Oh damn. Yeah. So if you, instead of pixels, you can see hair and skin. I know these images aren't really great, but it is a great example of how powerful these AI tools are. Okay, I can, I literally can't tell the difference between either of them. I, I, they look like they're shot with the same lens. Also doing it this way adds so much more flexibility in post too, because I can recompose the images in any way. Especially if you're only looking on smaller mediums like a cell phone or Instagram. The small differences are gonna be so minute where you're not really gonna be able to tell the differences. And if you kind of think about it, it's kind of like I took a photo from 60 millimeters all the way to 90 millimeters and beyond if you have even high resolution sensors. Realistically, like I don't need to start at 60 mils. If I shot this on 35 millimeters, this effect would even double. If you're limited to only having a couple pieces of glass, this is an excellent way to expand your flexibility of what you can shoot and your creativity of how you can shoot. But what do you guys think? Is this actually something that you would use? So if you're new to the channel and just want to see more weird content, then smash that like button and subscribe to the channel. And until next time, ciao.